The zeal, the thrill, the adrenaline rush. The Kengen Annihilation Tournament brims with nerve-wracking twists and turns as each fight ends with a shocking left hook, a lethal kick, or a punch out of the blue. The sheer brutality that is apparent throughout the series is studded with the presence of a huge cast of fighters, all of whom share one thing in common, the lust for blood and action. The brutality and cruelty that underlie every moment of Kengen Ashura are quite unfathomable to say the least. And all the fighters seem to be functioning as pawns to power-hungry merchants and corporate moguls, all of whom seek the same goal, to reach the zenith of the hierarchy. However, our protagonist is built differently. Very, very different. First introduced as an arrogant fellow with the tendency to instigate fights for fun, Tokita Oma is an unconventional character in this genre of anime that deals exclusively with brutal fighting and insane stunts. Although he would never back down from a fight to prove his strength, Oma isn't really the typical all bronze, no brains kind of guy. With an analytical mind that can decipher the intentions of a person solely by their stance and gestures, Oma is not your regular street fighter. As we said, he's built differently. At the same time, Oma's nature is in sharp contrast with his own personality as the infamous Ashura. Instead, his uncharacteristic simplicity and good-hearted nature actually present him as an endearing and admirable character in the series. So, in this video, we'll be breaking down each aspect of Tokita's anatomy while we describe at length his abilities, personality, and his unnatural strength that goes beyond basic human standards. The Origin Story who is Tokita Oma? Where does he come from? And why is that relevant to his anatomy? Unlike other famous protagonists in the world of anime, Oma's childhood is shrouded in mystery. In fact, his very name was given by his mentor and adoptive father, Niko Tokita. The only information regarding Oma's past in the canon gives a very brief picture of his tough life as a young boy in the alleyways of the inside. A desolate place where people fight to survive, Oma's life has been more about struggling against the unceasing hardships of the material world, where people are forced to engage in scuffles for the most basic necessities. In the absence of a family, Oma was forced to live by himself and battle for his subsistence. And on one such occasion, Niko Tokita chose to defend him from the Yakuza. He is the same man who gave him his name, derived from the wards named Tokita and Shichioba, which were situated in the inside where Oma sought refuge in the borderland between. Since then, Niko has made the young Oma undergo a strict combat training regimen, all for the sake of his protection and well-being, so that he could defend himself by overpowering his adversaries. The ideas that Nico incubated in him had a lasting impact on his life and destiny. Having been brought up by a brilliant fighter, Oma has known nothing else in his life besides violence and bloodshed. As a matter of fact, the entirety of Kengen Ashura seemingly normalizes the instances of gore that keep appearing frequently in the series. This can be interpreted as a way to get a glimpse into Oma's world, the one where people lead their lives on the basis of their primal instincts. And this is quite evident in Season 1 when Kazuo Yamashita, his handler at the Nogi Group, shrieks in horror when he comes to know that Oma has hunted down a boar to have meat for his meal. Interestingly, this is one of the most fundamental aspects of his own physiology. Having been subjected to a rough childhood, Oma is well aware of the basics for survival, which includes overpowering those who are stronger than him. After all, in his formative years, all Oma was able to do was fight for his own life and survive the harsh realities of the real world. Raised in a society where power power is measured in terms of physical strength, Nico's guidance and support are what made Oma the person he is in the present time. With every fight he got into, he was able to learn about every aspect of his body and his own self. Be it power, agility, endurance, or even his wit, Oma was able to shape his own image into someone who is much stronger than the likes of Nico, his master who left an indelible impression on his mind. So how was Oma's relationship with Nico? Let's find out. The Turning Point how did training with Nico turn Tokita into a living weapon? Can he control his anatomy down to its last cell? Training under Nico Tokita was less about exploring martial arts and more about the exponential increase of his own capabilities. And that is exactly what happened. The most significant phase of Oma's training took place in the forest of Gakigahara, where the protagonist had to land one blow on his master. But there was a catch. He would be wearing weights on his wrists and ankles the entire time. For 10 days straight, Oma had a difficult time defending himself against the lethal hits by Nico, who would come at him out of the blue, inflicting severe amounts of pain during the process. However, Oma was finally able to give it his all and land a blow on Nico, who was satisfied with the progress his protege had made. While Nico had a lot to contribute to Oma's development as a fighter, it was the environment that shaped him into the man he is. 
The harsh conditions that Oma had to endure were far more serious than Nico's challenge. In other words, Oma was not only being taught to strengthen his physical capabilities, but also to withstand the hostilities of nature. After all, only after overcoming all adversities, natural or human, can an entity ensure its own survival. And that is how Oma endured it all. But we'll talk about the endurance part later. For now, let's focus on the fundamentals of the Nico style, and that is the katas. The term kata basically means form. It's an elaborately choreographed set of martial arts movements that is practiced alone or together with a group of other practitioners. In the world of Kengen Ashura, the kata holds a special place. The different katas under the Nikko style are adamantine, flame, water, and redirection. Let's learn about each of the katas one by one. Adamantine Kata as the name suggests, the adamantine kata requires the user to tighten the muscles and harden his body. Serving both defensive and offensive purposes, the adamantine kata is the fundamental set that Oma resorts to quite a lot over the course of the series. Some of the most memorable moves in the adamantine kata include the flying axe kick. This involves tightening the leg muscles followed by the titular move to inflict a heavy blow on the enemy. Next is the indestructible. It's a defensive move in which the user clenches every single muscle in their body to protect the bone and vital organs from being damaged by any external damage dealt by the opponent. Although it turns the muscles into an impregnable shield, Oma once noted that the indestructible can be a liability as it compromises the body's maneuverability to a great extent. The third one is the Iron Break. It is basically the indestructible, but in this case, only the muscles in the hands and feet of the user are tightened. It's certainly an impactful weapon, but it can take a great toll on amateurs if they don't use it properly. For instance, Koga tightened the hand muscles so much that they eventually became paralyzed. An application of the Iron Breaker is the Iron Breaker Chain. It is a continuous series of strikes that have been enhanced by the Iron Breaker move, and its effectiveness is unquestionable to say the least. The Iron Fingers move, if you've guessed by now, also involves the strengthening of the muscles, but specifically the fingers. A very resourceful technique, the Iron Fingers is best for dealing with jabbing attacks or to enable the movement of the fingers if they've been damaged severely. The most famous technique under the Adamantine Kata is none other than the Bone Bind. With this, a user is able to shift their body parts in the case of a broken bone. Such is the brilliance of this Kata, and we're just getting started. Flame Kata the second important kata in the Nico style, the flame kata accentuates the user's agility and speed through dynamic positioning and movement. The first move on this list is flash fire, which helps the user create after images of their own self to disorient the enemy for a time. It's kind of similar to the flicker of a flame. Another special technique is the phantom pace, in which the user dodges the movement exactly before the enemy's attack, misleading them into believing that the damage was dealt successfully. Thirdly, we have the raging fire, which requires the user to dig their toes into the ground and sprint at an inhuman speed. Finally, we have the earth shrinking, the ultimate technique of the flame kata. By resting their entire body on the skeletal structure instead of the muscles, the earth shrinking requires the user to shift their center of gravity to move at unimaginable speeds so much so that it creates the illusion of the user moving backward while the distance between him and the opponent decreases in an instant. Water Kata The third kata is an elemental opposite of the flame kata. The water kata is a grappling-based set of techniques with the most number of moves in it, but here we'll focus on some of the most memorable techniques of the kata. The bind of Pisces enables the user to restrict the movement of the opponent by using one arm to hold the hands together and using the legs to lock the other arm. Jellyfish Clutch involves the user catching the opponent in a headlock and using using the momentum of the latter's sprint to lean downwards. This is an extremely brutal move to break the enemy's neck in a snap. The screw cutter Jizo is used when the enemy is off balance while in a supine position. At that moment, the user grabs both the hands of the opponent to flip them over into a prostrate position. This is immediately followed by a kind of arm lock while sitting on the opponent's shoulder, rendering them defenseless. The Water Dragon's Vein is quite a frightening technique. It requires the user to clutch the enemy's neck and knees using the arms, while the legs are forced to push against the latter's back. Although the immediate result is the enemy's loss of consciousness, it is said that the actual purpose of the Water Dragon's Vein technique is to break the spine. Oma's most famous use of this technique was during his fight against Ryan. Then we have the ultimate technique on this list, the Water Mirror. Seen in an exceptional face-off between Oma and Imai Cosmo, this technique can be used if the user himself has sustained a fracture in the arms. Given the lack of rigidity in terms of the exact movements necessary to execute the same, the water mirror is extremely fluid in nature with one flow of movement, to pin down the enemy in a chokehold and inflict severe damage on them. Redirection Kata This is one of Oma's strongest fortes. 
Over the course of Kengen Ashura, Oma is seen to execute several techniques of the redirection kata as he manipulates the flow of power of many adversaries by using the smallest of movements. This is a unique kata that allows incredible kinetic vision and a complete grasp of one's physical control. The first technique on this list is the Weeping Willow, the most popular one in the list. To be precise, the Weeping Willow changes the trajectory of the opponent's attack by altering the flow of their power, thus resulting in the enemy losing balance while also missing their aim. Next, we have the Change of Scenery. Yeah, that's the name of the second technique of the Redirection Kata. The Change of Scenery is quite a tongue-in-cheek name for a move with which the user throws their enemy in a twisting fashion. For number three, we have the Chi Blockage, which is a very strong palm strike. Using this, a user is able to destroy the nerves of the opponent or simply suppress the autonomic nervous system system, which may result in cardiac arrest and organ failure due to lack of oxygen. Fourthly, the Entanglement. A modification of the Weeping Willow, the Entanglement not only changes the trajectory of the enemy's attack, but also directs it right at the same person. You know, something along the lines of giving them a taste of their own medicine, quite literally. A defensive technique of the Redirection Kata, the Flowing Edge alters the trajectory of the opponent's attack with the application of a great degree of power. Given the fact that it demands superior reflexes and speed, the Flowing Edge can also dodge bullets. Finally, we have the Marionette, which is the ultimate technique of this kata. It enhances the user's intrinsic power and controls the body with the minimum usage of power. This functions as a last resort when the user is running low on stamina and is yet to subdue their enemy. In short, Oma's life in The Inside played a major role in his growth into an anatomical powerhouse, so to speak. With the forces of nature being brought together in his combat training, Nico's ingenious style of fighting gives ample scope to the user to survive the toughest of ordeals come what may. But how did this training aid Oma in maximizing his own endurance levels? Pain is just an illusion for him. How much pain can Oma tolerate? Is he possessed by a demon that keeps him alive? We've spent quite a bit of the bandwidth of this video talking about Oma's superhuman strength and how the Nico style has become the basis of his identity as the Ashura. However, strength, reflexes, and agility aren't the only things that the Nico system has empowered in Oma. While the display of power is quite crucial, the tolerance of pain is the real test for every fighter in the ring. So, what is the secret behind Oma's endurance? Well, there are two. Demon's Bane. The first secret technique that underlies the Nico style is the Demon's Bane. To be precise, it is the coalescence of all four katas at the same time. This means that only a master of all four katas is capable of executing this technique. It's a formless move that doesn't have a discernible set of features or moves to identify it at once. To learn this technique, one must be in a situation where they experience a heightened sense of awareness, which is only possible when that person is on the verge of death. In other words, the Demon's Bane is the final technique a fighter uses to defend himself while also delivering a fatal blow on their adversary. This is done by redirecting the flow of their power, followed by the Water Kata to strengthen the flow throughout one's body, the Flame Kata to correct the movements, and the Adamantine Kata to deal a far more brutal attack on their opponent. But this does have a few weaknesses. In order to use the Demon's Bane, the user must be well versed in the Water Kata and the Redirection Kata, as they are the foundation of this technique. In fact, a small mistake while altering the flow of power may result in the user sustaining grave injury. But if you're thinking that the Demon's Bane isn't that big of a deal, then the next one will definitely leave you in a state of shock or awe. Make your choice. The last and the most significant secret technique in Kengen Ashura is none other than the Possessing Spirit. Possessing Spirit Often called the Advance by Oma, it's a remarkable technique to boost one's power to unimaginable heights. The ones who are said to have mastered this technique are known as the candidates of the Tiger's Vessel, of which Oma is a prominent figure. So what exactly is the Possessing Spirit? This technique is said to boost the user's vitals by exponentially increasing the cardiovascular output to further boost the rate of metabolism. This means the user's speed, acceleration, reflexes, and their power increase manifold. The sheer intensity of this technique is the main reason why it's treated as a trump card by fighters in the Kengen Annihilation Tournament. During this technique, the heart of the user is boosted to such an extent that every beat becomes audible from a distance. This immediately results in a series of physiological changes. The body develops a vascular texture while the skin becomes red in color. The fighter's hair seemingly flares in the air, and a terrifying, menacing smile appears across the user's face. In short, they become an unstoppable killing machine. But the transformation doesn't end there. As a matter of fact, there are three stages of this technique depending on the power level gained by the user. First Gear Stage 1 in the Possessing Spirit technique causes the user's vascular nature and agility to increase at a not-so-gradual pace. 
This is first seen when Oma faces Kuroki Gensai, as he learns to master controlling the damage output of this technique with sheer brilliance. Second Gear This is kind of a middle path between the first and the final stage, which has only been used by Oma till now. In the second stage, the user's skin develops a redder hue while the damage being dealt to the enemy is further augmented to a great extent. This is in tandem with the feral personality that he develops during this process. Full Throttle as the name implies, the third stage is all about raising the bars to the maximum, that is, using the possessing spirit to its fullest. With the heart beating at the fastest rate possible, the user's appearance changes drastically into that of a demon, with a darker red shade across the body. The blood vessels seemingly move up against the skin, while the eyes darken to the extent that they resemble the fantastical eyes of the Kure and Wu clans. These simultaneous physiological changes seemingly affect the brain chemistry, as the user suddenly becomes a bloodthirsty entity wreaking havoc at every path he treads. But there are a handful of fighters who have mastered the full throttle, like Rainio and Long Min. Unfortunately, the possessing spirit entails severe physiological damage during the stage-wise transformations. The final stage only worsens the user's health, as it may result in respiratory issues, cerebral difficulties, cardiac arrest, and even death. Hence, it is said that the best and safest way of utilizing this technique is to use the first gear in conjunction with the adamantine kata. That way, the physical risks would be mitigated, while the user would still have an upper hand in battle. Marvelous Verdict it is indeed astonishing to see how Oma in the second year appears to be possessed by an infernal being with an unquenchable thirst for blood. However, he's the same person whose goodness and kind-hearted nature have had a huge impact on the people around him, especially Yamashita. In fact, Oma has inadvertently influenced Yamashita to boost the latter's morale while also questioning his own actions to become a better man. Thus, Oma's identity is not confined to his reputation as the Ashura. Rather, it transcends his violent nature to capture the virtuous and upstanding character within.